Just love you, Jesus loves you. Just listening to a sermon and all these preachers say, we will be, we will be, we will be, we will be citizens, you know, of the kingdom. We will be a part of the family. We will be, you know, made righteous, made perfect, all this stuff, which I just, God gave me a verse. The people that go to heaven are the spirits of the righteous made perfect. So they're living a righteous life. Not a perfect life, but a righteous life. And then when they die, they'll be made perfect and go to heaven. So we should already, we're, if you're born, if you've given your whole life to Jesus in a moment of time, if you've actually met Jesus, because you have to meet him in order to give him your life, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus. So when you meet the Holy Spirit and you surrender your whole life and it really works at, you know, your life does a 180 an atom bomb goes off, you completely change. And you know that you're a new creature. You know you've been born again. You can feel the Holy Spirit. Like right now, I can feel the Holy Spirit. So I am a citizen of the kingdom right now. I am a part of the family of God right now. I am righteous. Like I'm living a righteous life because the Holy Spirit, the righteous spirit, is my God and my guide and my commander and master. Jesus is my master and his spirit runs my life. So I'm not waiting until I die to become righteous, to become a part of a family. I'm a part of the heavenly family now. I'm a citizen now. I'm righteous and holy now. I'm loving towards God and neighbor now. Anyways, and I'm obedient now. Like I'm not getting better like I'm already completely sanctified. There's no, there's no process of sanctification. There's no getting closer to Jesus. Like I'm as close to Jesus as you can get. His spirit and my spirit are like this. I gave my, he was with me my whole life and I went astray. I gave my life to Jesus and now I can't get away from him. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord and our spirit are one. So my conjoined twin is Jesus. He can be your conjoined twin too if you want, if you give him your whole life. Salvation is free because he sets you free from the cesspool cell of sin. The prison cell of disgusting sin. He sets you free from it. So it's free. And the free gift is him. Because if you step outside the cesspool of sin... Jesus is there, and he's your God, he's your life, he's your liberty, your happiness, your holiness, your freedom, your best friend, and your God. Anyways, love you, Jesus loves you. So I'm not waiting to, have, to get to heaven in order to be right with God. And it's not the cross that made... Alright. The cross allows me entrance into heaven, and it allows me to go to Jesus. It, the cross allows the possibility of salvation. The cross does what Jesus did on the cross. But Jesus is the way. The cross is not the way to heaven. Jesus himself, the person of Jesus. That's like saying like... I don't even know, like... I don't even know. I'm trying to think of an example. But uh, like if you're going to someone's house, like if you're coming over to my house, like if I sent an invitation, like anyone who wants to come over, you know, can come over. It's still up to me. I don't even know how to describe it. It's a relationship with Jesus. And it's not just a relationship. Everybody has a relationship with Jesus. It's a saving relationship where you give your life, you submit to Jesus permanently in a moment of time. So anyways, you have to know Jesus. Like, you have to find him. Like, not know him from a distance. Not feel his presence sometimes. But you not him answer your prayer sometimes. But you have to meet him. Go outside the city bearing the reproach that he bore. And... 
give your life to Jesus and um so like the cross doesn't mean anything if you don't find Jesus like he died on the cross yes but for that to be applied to you you have to give him your life and he gives you his life and then you can live a holy life so you don't have to wait for Satan's long process of sanctification that was invented by the devil to get people to go to hell. They're like, well, I'm getting better. So it doesn't matter if you're getting better, worse, whatever. Like if you don't have Jesus and completely sanctified, like I was set apart seven years ago, I haven't gotten any better or any worse in seven years because the same God that saved me and cleaned me up is living in me. So I haven't gotten any more holier or any less holy. I haven't gotten any more holy or any less holy in the last seven years. <laughs> so may, my love for Jesus may have gone up. I don't know. Like, I really loved him back then. Maybe my love for Jesus has increased, but my holiness has not. Like, I was set apart, made holy, separated unto God. The, the instant I gave my life to Jesus, nothing has changed. Like I have maybe more knowledge, maybe more love, but my my level of commitment to God is the same. My holiness is the same. So anyways, love you, Jesus loves you. So I'm ready for Jesus to come back right now. Like at any minute in the last seven years, I would be ready for Jesus to come back Like because I'm living a holy, righteous life, because Jesus lives in me, because I surrendered my life to him, because I saw it with all my heart until I found him. And I gave my whole life to Jesus. So I am holy. Go on record there. Oh, somebody says he's holy. Yes, because the God of the universe lives in me. So uh, it, you can choose to do the same or you can choose to burn in hell. <laughs> so anyways, give your life to Jesus. He's God. So anyways, um, love you. Jesus loves you. So. Jesus would that none would perish, so give your life to Jesus. But anyways, Jesus lives in me, so his Holy Spirit, so I'm going to live a holy life. Like, it's not something that I try to do. Like, in my heart, I always want to please God because he gave me a new heart. And he lives in me, so I always want to please him. But I don't, like, try to, like, what color should I paint the walls, like... You know, let me do everything, jot, tittle, blah. It's like I follow, like the Holy Spirit is the spirit of peace. Like I follow the spirit of peace. And there's some there's some hard stuff he calls me to, but he's with me, helping me, giving me peace. He's the comforter. So I don't like, you know, I'm going to help 30 old ladies across the street. I'm going to, you know, mow 20 lawns for free. Like, I don't try to, like, come up with random things to make me good. Like, I just do whatever I think God wants me to do. And I read the Bible, the New Testament mainly, to, like, encourage me and remind me and help help me and fuel. Anyways, love you, Jesus loves you. Jesus.